All right, we are recording. Hey, y'all, welcome back. So I am so excited. I don't know when I'm going to upload this, if it's before or after the video, and we live in exciting times, but holy crap, y'all. You don't even know how huge what's happening is, is. So let me, let me tell you, what if you live back during the prohibition of alcohol? And all of a sudden you found out that, you know, they were going to be making alcohol legal. Like these are the times that we live in with the whole mushroom community and the legalization, right? Well, this mushroom is legal, but nobody knows about it. But it means we get to ride on the coattails of the whole legalization thing. And people will start learning about mushrooms in general, which will bring them to this mushroom. But, but also at the same time, we are with this mushroom where we were 30 years ago with marijuana where we were finally studying it and it was getting approved for studies and we were learning about the CBD and the THC, but we didn't know anything about all the associated, you know, flavonoids and terpenes or any of that. Like, imagine if we didn't know any of that and all we knew was CBD and THC and hey, turns out there's like five different places in the brain that these things go to. Like kindergarten level information and look at where we are today, right, with, with marijuana. That's where we are right now with Amanita, with Amanita muscaria. We are in our infancy and you guys are here for it. And I don't know if any of you were around for my first videos on this, but one of the first things we did and the whole reason we let, we started the forum is because we wanted that same research to happen with this mushroom. And I've been calling for research. I want to know what exactly can we cite and say that this can be used for. And then like, here we are a year and a half into it and it's freaking happening. And this is company number one doing it. So this is Jeffrey Stevens and he's the CEO. And I watched a lot of interviews with him. He's so freaking cool. Round of applause. Welcome, Jeffrey. Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm so excited. I can't believe you said yes to the interview. Like, oh, okay. So one of the first things I want you to tell the audience is explain to them why these trials are just completely going to change everything. And then secondly, the approval, you know, for Canada and for America, FDA, all that. Why is that second thing going to change everything? Sure. Well, first off, thanks. And, and you know, equally excited to be on your show. Uh, you know, when we first started this adventure, you were one of the first, uh, when we did our research on Amanita, your, your YouTube channel came up. So we've been admiring you from afar for a while. So thank you. Um, with respects to how this plays out with, uh, you know, we are doing our preclinical style uh, studies right now. So that means we're not doing any human trials. We're doing uh, our preclinical trials. And what that's going to allow us to do is, is prove the safety and the efficacy of Amanita muscaria. And specifically, what we're focusing on is the muscimol compound. Um, you know, through we just announced this week that we've uh, filed a patent on our extraction protocol, uh, and that's to convert the ibotenic acid into muscimol at a higher degree. Uh, and all, all of that goes towards you know creating the specifications, the safety data sheets, uh, and all that all the protocols necessary so that when something comes to market, um, you know the 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 product is known as, as safe. You know what's in what's inside of that every time is going to be consistent. Uh, so that's that's the side of the world that we live on, and that's what we're working towards. So the preclinical studies take about ten months. We're working with a uh, contract research organization in Ontario called KGK Science. We did our our white paper, which really did our um, um, that was really about getting this the removing any red flags, I, looking at this and saying, okay, can we identify that Amanita muscaria? and muscimol specifically can be used as a safe product. Because you know, and your community knows, if you Google search Amanita, it comes up poisonous, deadly, stay away, don't touch, don't even let your kids touch it, let alone eat it. Um, so there was a lot of work to do. Um, again, as a public company, that's the opportunity. Uh, when we look at the psychedelic space in general, there's probably 25 companies, and I'm aware of another 35 to 40 that are trying to go public over the next six months. And they're focusing on, psilocybin, DMT, um, you know, LSD, sort of the more known ones. To date, we're the only one focusing on Amanita. And I think, you know, you and I had talked about that when we had our first call, where the opportunity lies. I don't see us competing with you or your community. What I see is us 
uh, adding value and, and legitimizing what you have been saying and what your community believes and knows because the, yes. anecdotally they've been using the mushroom. So we're going to provide the science that now supports that. So, you know, we're, we're as a public company, we have access to capital. We have access to these scientists and, and we're able to do that. So as we clear these these milestones and we we, you know, we did our, our um, MTD, so maximum tolerated dosage study. We'll do our 14 day ox, uh, oral toxicity, our 90 day oral toxicity. As we complete those studies, we will then be validating everything that your community has been saying that you've been preaching. So I see us working, uh, you know, much like the mushroom with the, with the pine forest, you know, we're symbiotic, we work together on this. So that's sort of how I see, see this going forward. Um, we're really excited and, and obviously to be able to talk to your community is pretty exciting for us as well, because oftentimes I know that, you know, corporations are viewed as the big bad guy coming in. We're going to, you know, you know, just sort of come in and, and, clear cut and move everything out of the way and destroy everything. And, and that's not the approach that we're taking at all. So we, we love the opportunity to talk about it more with you and, and your community. So once you get this and you're going for being able to like, okay, well, first of all, y'all, you know, when I tell you all the time that I'm trying to sell the things that I'm making and experimenting with, and I sell them on my Etsy store and I have to just call it what's in it. Like I can't make any claims about it. I can't say this will help you, you know, sleep or this will cure your addiction or this will help with pain. And the FDA is really, really, really strict about labels and I could get in some serious trouble. So what they are doing now is going to fix that. So can you speak to that? Yeah, for sure. So that, that's a great point. And, and we're equally in that in that category with you, um, as far as what we can say, we we rely a lot on you know anecdotal stories of how this mushroom and this compound has helped people, whether it be with sleep insomnia, Lyme disease, uh, you know, uh, addiction, you name it. So we we rely on that at this time. When we complete these preclinical studies, we'll be applying to the FDA for a new dietary ingredient and to Health Canada for a natural health product number. So that's the first step. That to me. What we don't have is the benefit of, say, someone with psilocybin, where they've got historical scientific papers and, and work to, to use as a foundation. Uh, we're effectively the first group doing the science on this and, and, and bringing it to this level. So we we have to build that foundation first. So we have to sort of, you know, crawl, walk and run. We're in the crawl phase right now where we're doing all that base foundation work. Once that's completed, we'll apply for that, that food supplement. We think there's a huge opportunity just as they as, as something that people can have access to, whether it be at the grocery store, pharmacy, health and wellness store, um, to have that in that in that fashion. But we also do believe, like there, as you know, there's fantastic medicinal qualities to to the compound. And so once we get the base foundation done, we'll look at other opportunities as well. Um, so this first product, you know, the way we were talking about it and framing it is is as a sleep aid. It's it's going to assist you with relaxing and calming and it'll be a low dose uh tincture as our first product and then we'll go from there but we're very excited about it you know we we this is not a one-year plan for us where we just do a preclinical study and then we're marketing products we we see this as a three to three to six year plan where that's the first step and then we build off of it from there um, and we think we have an equal opportunity with uh with some of those mental health issues and physical health issues because we know that it's you know it's transdermal it's topical it can be used for arthritis etc um so we we see a lot of opportunities for that for sure so if you get those if you whatever claims you're going to go for first second third fourth as each of those comes online and you get the the approval through canada and america does that mean i can also make those claims for sure. So once we get to that point, so again, our first first phase, we won't be making claims specifically. You have to sort of you have to go through those uh, human clinical trials to be able to make claims. Um, so that first phase is really just about proving the science, the safety, and the efficacy. Um, this will be identified as safe for human consumption. We'll have the specifications and standardization. So those are the key sort of foundations that I talked about. And then from there, you're able to do increased levels of studies, and and that's where you get into. The benefit of being a public company because we'll have access to capital that can fund you know the multi-million dollar studies that have to take place working with those groups in the large large subject groups as well all right so just because the science shows that it's safe for human consumption doesn't mean the government agrees and that's the second step are getting governments to publicly 
put the stamp of approval as safe for human consumption, right? So that, and then also being getting the next phase is getting to the point where you can make claims, right? So that's a right. Part so save is first, is, is, claims are second. Yeah. And y'all yeah. know, like I'm always having to put not for human consumption and wherever you purchase yours right now, they all have to say not for human consumption. And there's the potential in the future that once it is safe and declared safe for human consumption, and then any claim or whatever that they can test for it then there's the potential that Etsy and eBay and all these other places will start to change their mind and allow sales again. And this will hopefully open everything back up. And what I'm hoping will change that rhetoric of it being so toxic and deadly and dangerous. And we can finally start to, what I've been doing this whole time is change that. And this company is going to take it from me doing this by myself for 10 years to this company being able to do that within a year or two. So that's awesome. Let's get into a difficult question. So we <laughs> talked about this in our meeting, you know, with your COO, and it was my number one concern, and that is sourcing the Amanita. And it turns out sure. that also online, you know, when I opened it up to questions from other people, that one came up. Uh, a lot. And I had mentioned in our interview about going with you and helping teach some of the local people that you're buying from or sourcing from about slurrying. And one of the questions a viewer asked was, would you be interested in actually planting birch trees or whatever trees in that area help the Amanita grow sort of as a give back and a good faith sort of thing? and to show where your company lies as far as our ecosystem and giving back to the earth. So I know I'm stacking a lot of questions here, but in general, can you okay. speak to the whole sourcing thing and then the environment and the ecology thing? Yeah, for sure. So the approach we're taking is very much that, um, you know, we want to do something, the approach is sustainable. So, you know, obviously when you're working on the health and wellness product, the, the whole initiative where people want to purchase this this uh, end result would be that they want a natural solution to some of their health and wellness issues. Um, so obviously for us, it, we need to make sure that we're checking all the boxes and, and doing it in a sustainable and environmentally friendly way. So for what we've done initially, we've sourced our, our first uh, batch from, I think it was about five different locations, five different foragers that we've worked with. We're working with small businesses who are doing it. They're, they're family operated, they're, you know, and for us, it's about identifying for our needs where the, because each, each location, each geographic location is going to have a different composition of the mushroom, as we know, right? So uh, for us, it's about identifying what areas have what we're looking for best when we do our specifications. Um, and then going from there. But yeah, we would, you know, to answer the question about planting trees or something, of course, that would be a fantastic initiative that we could do. Um, we're also talking with groups about looking at as we go forward and, and you know, two and three years down the line, if, if we're getting to a point, how can we do this in a way that there's a potential for, you know, an indoor growth? And I know that's very challenging because it's symbiotic with the forest and the trees. And, um, but, you know, like anything, if you put enough brain power and money behind something, you generally can find a solution. So we're looking at that as well as a way to not disrupt the natural environment where that is as well so if we can have you know and and i would think there's like a premium product that you have that comes sourced from the forest and, and comes forward and then there's more of sort of a you know the indoor grow which is gonna in some cases you can look at bioreactors and just get the one compound that you're looking for right so there's a lot on the science side that that we're going to look at as well going forward but I think that the, the short answer is we are aware of how delicate and precious this mushroom is. We are aware of what it means to the community and, and the approach we're gonna take is gonna be to work, you know, in conjunction rather than, you know, around people. So we wanna, you know, we wanna spread the love. We wanna, we wanna purchase from multiple people so that, you know, these industries, these, these you know, family, family businesses can flourish and, and benefit from, from a group like ours coming in. Cool, this is gonna be fun. This is going to be good, yeah, I think. Sure. Um, one of the other questions is sort of like on a more personal note. And one of my personal questions is, would you be willing to come with me on a forage in the fall? I would love to. Yeah, that'd be very if cool. If you can get if, away. Uh, COVID, 
if we can get through the COVID barriers yeah. and cross borders and do that for sure, that'd be, that'd be a lot of fun. All righty, cool. And then the viewers want to know because you're in the entheogenic space is personally, if you feel okay, answering this question, have you done psilocybin? Yes, I have. Yeah. And then have you done I've Amanita? Done, uh, uh, so no, I do have, <laughs> we have a pack here, so oh. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go. Um, I just, and actually I'm, I'm going to look at some of your videos and, and look at making a tea to do that. I just, uh, I haven't had the opportune time with respects to sort of a clear work schedule and then figuring out weekends with, you know, I've got two kids. So just, I don't want to be, you know, having, having an experience for the first time if my kids are around me. So I'm just trying to figure that out, but, uh, I very much do look forward to it. And as you and I mentioned, I'm also keen to sort of try our extract as well. So I'd like to try that as my first experience and then try the natural experience as well. So we're getting close to the point of being able to have that available. So for, for my consumption, not for mass consumption, but so that's, that's it. Yeah. The psilocybin mushrooms I have done, uh, I, I microdosed them quite a bit as well. Um, and, uh, you know, I've done some macro trips with it, uh, as I think a lot of people did through university days or college days. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to trying Amanita. Uh, I think it's important for me as the CEO of the company working in the space um, to have that experience and to be able to talk anecdotally myself about it, not just relying on other people's experience. So uh, that's definitely on, on the list of things to, to get uh, checked off for sure. So as you know, this mushroom is illegal in a, a lot of countries that are actually kind of surprising that it's illegal in, is your company going to do anything to try to move that <laughs> a little bit? Well, I think when you look at, you know, if getting FDA approval, Health Canada approval, that sort of moves needles. And, and when you take it in sort of through a nootropic uh, sort of fashion initially, you can, you can, use that to uh, influence other countries and other, other, you know, government bodies who would otherwise look at it else, you know, if we can show their safety and efficacy and we've, we've done all of that work. Um, but for us, you know, we have to look at the dollars and cents side of things as well. So obviously it's at first most important for us to go into those markets where we can work with the product and, and market that product. So the U S and Canada are first, first markets for us, for sure. Why is the package so clinical looking? That's just a mock-up for the, uh, for the website. Um, you know, it'll be in a tincture bottle We, you know, we like the health and wellness side. We're thinking we're talking with designers and they said, well, you know, sort of the purple mauve color is, is sort of a calming color. And, and, but, you know, in order to move forward with, with these trials, we felt that the best form factor would be a tincture, uh, that wouldn't cause any concern from any of the regulatory bodies when they're looking at, at sort of the applications of this and how it could be used. If you were to come in a capsule, um, then it starts to look more like a drug and a drug development. And, and so we just felt it was best to stay in this. In and this if it looks track. like that, then that's going to be a little bit more difficult to get it. Yeah, well, you, we do <laughs> have to do a little bit of work on it for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. I wrote you some questions and I think we already covered some of them. Have you worked in the marijuana industry at all? So my background uh, prior to this, uh, I've, I've been on the issuer side for about four or five years, uh, working with private companies, taking them public. Uh, prior to that, I was institutional sales and trading. So I worked with uh, multiple companies, raising money, taking them public uh, on the banking side. So directly, I have not started or been involved in, in a cannabis company, but I have a lot of experience in that space through, through connections, through investments. And then, you know, one of our board members is Terry Booth, who was the founder of Aurora Cannabis. Um, so we have, you know, experience there. David Schizel, my COO, actually spent the last four years working with various cannabis companies in Israel um, on the product development side. And, and so he's got a lot of experience there as well. So are you willing to talk about Terry Booth's past at all? Because I'm getting bothered by that a lot. A lot of people are hitting me up about his yeah, political this, listen, leanings I, in the past. Terry uh, is a little controversial for sure. Um, you know, he's there's two sides to the Aurora trade. I think, uh, you know, if you look at the cannabis sector, and I think this is a key point that I'll bring up with your, with your group, but if you look at how cannabis evolved, it was a lot of entrepreneurs who believed that there was an opportunity here that, that laws would change and that, and that this could be something of great value. 
they bootstrapped it, right? They didn't have a lot of big money supporting them. They, they raised money from high net worth individuals and, and sort of grassroots built it up. What we're seeing with psychedelics is quite different. You know, right out of the gate, you've got like Compass Pathways, MindMed, you've got Peter Thiel and, and I believe Warren Buffett. The biggest names in the world are investing in the Thai life, Compass Pathways. Um, you know, so you've got a very different start position. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that people recognize that this is a medicinal play. There's, you know, there's there's a need for mental health issues, for, for solutions to serious mental health issues. Um, the pharmaceutical industry really hasn't had a breakthrough in mental health drug development in about 30 years. And in fact, the, the drug development they, they had 30 years ago for it, we're, we're finding out are actually causing greater problems with addiction and, and the like. So having a natural occurring compound that you can use that can benefit mental health that's non-addictive, uh, I think is, is the reason that we see this big money coming into the space right out of the gate. Um, so when you look at what's happening in that space, I think that's a key differentiator and it's, it's really beneficial for all of us. You know, Psych Wellness, our company, we were included in the Horizon Psychedelic Index. That happened in the first year of this whole sort of public market frenzy, which is incredible. It took about four or five because years. Because everybody cannabis. knows. It's like, as soon as people learn of this mushroom, they're like, holy shit, how has nobody known this before now? Like, why? Same reason I started oh, the sure. channel. I'm like, why is nobody talking about this? And so, yeah, like as soon as people hear, they're like, oh my God. Yeah, so that, and you know, our, our benefit is that we are the only ones right now talking about this mushroom in the public company sphere. Uh, the challenge is like you've had to do for the past 10 years, we, we have to educate everyone on what Amanita muscaria is, what muscimol is, what the benefits are. Um, and walk through that process and we have to do it alone whereas you've got 20 other companies talking about psilocybin you've got 15 companies talking about lsd so for us it's 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 sort of a heavier weight we have to do it ourselves but it's also the opportunity where we're not crowded with noise of other people so it's a it's a rarefied air situation for us i think and we're excited to have that opportunity but i think you know working with you and coming on the show and, and engaging your community is key um we can't be perfect you know, we are a public company. We do have, you know, uh, we do have an agenda where we have to get to the point where we make money for our shareholders and create value. Um, and that will not always align with the values and, you know, the thought of, of your community because, you know, there's two different, you know, you and I talked earlier and I thought a good analogy was wine. You know, this whole sector, this whole community enjoys wine. There's a group that likes to make their own wine and enjoys the process and and they'll either they'll, they'll buy the grapes or they'll buy the liquid and they'll make it in their basement. And, and then there's a group that goes to the, the liquor store and wine store because they just enjoy the process of drinking wine. We, we, we're, the, we're the liquor store guys. We're, we're the, you know, they're gonna go and they're gonna have a product that's, that's completed and available for them. And then the community that exists now where people forage and they go and they learn how to make tinctures and they learn how to take, make bombs and, and do everything, that's, still going to exist and in fact you know i think they that community flourishes because we we destigmatize you know amanita and and we help educate people on the benefits of it and how to use it safely so yeah i think that's kind of a neat way on how we can work together going forward people get myopic about it and sitting at home and foraging and they don't realize like there's so much room for everything here and yes we don't grow it yet and yes that's the limiting factor but not everybody wants to go in the woods and get dirty. And some people are coming straight off the pharmacology train and are terrified to go just to a natural supplement that's on a shelf. And that's gonna be a huge leap for them and they need it. All the way down to people that are in the dirt, foraging and drying them at home. And then the bulk of people who are just buying them dried from other people and messing around at home and people that are making products and just selling them on Etsy or whatever. Like this is a whole community and we're finally leaving the homes and forests and coming out and going, okay, let's grow the community. And you can't grow the community without letting people fit in it where they want to fit in it. So not everybody wants to get dirty. And I get that. Speaking of companies and corporations, so a lot of you that are listening 
may not ever invest and you don't know anything about investing. It's super easy to get started. There's a lot of apps and places and ways for you to, to just get started. But if you want to join something that's in its inception, that is history making, freaking buy stock in this company. So what is your ticker symbol? Yeah, well, thank you. And, and uh, we trade on the Canadian Securities Exchange and our ticker symbol is PSYC. And then uh, we're also listed in the US on the OTC QB and our ticker is PSYCF. So, um, you know, it's pretty easy uh, in that side, psych and psych F. Um, and uh, yeah, listen, we're, we're excited. I think, I think we have a lot of work to do. There's a big education process that we have to do. I think we have to continue, you know, obviously we're, we're about halfway through our R and D side with this preclinical. And that to me, again, is the, is the first step. That's the foundation from there. We continue down that path. Um, you know, we, we haven't really talked about the team outside of Terry and, uh, what I will go back to Terry and just say, you know, despite where things are in the cannabis trade now and what people might have a view on him. You can't deny the fact that he was one of the, the trailblazers and the pioneers in the space of cannabis. And he created a tremendous amount of shareholder value for, for people that were involved early on. And he helped destigmatize the cannabis industry and, and build it. So, you know, I, I know there's two sides and I'm not gonna defend him. He's a, he's a grown man and, uh, you know, and capable of that himself. But um, he's been a great asset to me from from the standpoint of helping navigate the capital markets and how to do things on the corporate side with respect to the working with banks, etc. Um, but we also have Professor David Nutt. So Professor David Nutt is on our board. He joined us initially as an advisor uh, after three or four months. He wanted, you know, he's got a lot of reputational risk. He's a professor at Imperial College. He was Robin Carhart Harris's professor, in fact. Um, he's now the chair of the scientific advisory board for Compass Pathways. So he's, he's a big deal. He's probably one of the top five thought leaders in the modern renaissance of psychedelics when you look at sort of the, the conference circuit and who people go to as an expert. Uh, so he works very closely with David and our team on, on the whole R&D side of our, pro, of our project. And, uh, you know, he's, he's very passionate about Amanita. He wrote a paper on it uh, 30 years ago. And it just didn't go anywhere. So when we called him and said, hey, we're doing this, he was like, oh, very cool. I'd like to be involved. So he waited three months, waited to see that we we're doing everything scientifically and properly working with, you know, uh, well-regarded and respected um, CRO partner being KGK and, and then agreed to join as the full board member. So that was a great uh, boost of confidence for the team and for the community. Uh, and then Kevin Feeney, who, who you know, and is obviously very passionate about, uh, about the, uh, Amanita muscaria specifically. Um, there you go. You've got the fly agaric, his, his book. So Kevin, uh, Kevin is on our advisory board and is assisting us uh, as we move forward as well and uh, introducing us to, to people that he knows through the community as well so that we do approach this from not just the a corporate side but from understanding you know, the, the whole of the mushroom and the community that exists with it. So we're trying to ensure that you know, we have a diverse board and advisory board that can uh, advise us as we go forward and make sure that we're we're aware of all, all aspects of this mushroom. This, and there's some good questions in here. There, I can't ask them all. So uh, in Lou wants to know about your science. He's greatly concerned. He said nothing can set us back faster than someone who does bad science that's not repeatable that's not reliable because it was done by a corporation. And so it's called into question. And then when it, those experiments and that science is repeated and it can't be duplicated and peer reviewed, then you will actually set us back. Um, so yeah, thank you for the question. Uh, how, what I can say to that is, you know, we are working with a very well-regarded uh, contract research organization who works specifically in the in the food space and in the development of this uh, and then again guided by our board and advisory board who all have a tremendous amount of experience in preclinical trials leading to clinical trials and doing that um, i'm not a scientist by background so I, i'm not involved in that process other than you know reviewing contracts and and looking at milestones and and time frames and relying on on my team who are more experts in that field um, I can tell you that we we're not cutting any corners. We're working, you know, we're probably close to a million dollars in in spending to get to this point. So, you don't, you know, we we've done the toxicology assessment, we've done the, you know, the specifications. Like everything is going step by step to ensure that, 
you know, when we do make those applications, the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed and, and they'll be accepted and approved. Um, I can't guarantee that, but I, I do know that we're doing everything in a responsible fashion so that that's the end goal. And, and certainly for us, it would be you know, catastrophic if we got to the end goal and it didn't work. So, you know, we've got as much on the line uh, with respects to that um, that the community would have, I would say. So what some of the viewers want to know is, and you covered this, but I want to state it explicitly, what country will the product be available in first, second, and third? I would think the U.S. first, just because the nature of, of the application, once you've submitted it, uh, their review period is, is, is quicker than Canada. So it'd be U.S. than Canada initially. And, and then, then looking throughout Europe. All right. Will you be hiring anyone and would you hire any people on a work from home basis? And when would you be doing that and how would they apply? Yeah, so a lot of the work to date has been contracted to these to to the CRO, to KGK and then their their sister uh, lab that's working with us. Um, as we grow, we will be hiring. We'll be hiring more on this on the sales and marketing side initially as we get product going um, with respects to you know, forging and getting products. Um, right now, we're, we're just sourcing from multiple locations, as I mentioned, and, and different, typically, they're sort of family run businesses that people are doing. So um, to bring them on in house, I don't know, like, I don't, I don't believe that the community would actually want to see us do that, where we would actually, you know, specifically hire one group and take that, that uh, supply out of the ecosystem, right? I think, I think it's more uh, respectful to sort of have it from coming from multiple groups so that there's no um, loss of supply, if you will. Um, so we're, we're trying to figure that out as we go forward. And, uh, and you know, yes, we will be hiring and people likely will be working from home because COVID has demonstrated that people can do that effectively and efficiently. Um, and when that comes up, I just don't know the timing, like it'll be closer to getting product uh, to, to market for that. So Maxim Zyvanovs wants to know, would you rather fight a horse-sized duck or a thousand duck-sized horses? Would you rather fight a horse-sized duck or a thousand duck-sized horses? Sorry, find or fight? Fight, fight. fight. Um, listen, I, I'm not a fighter in any sense, so I wouldn't. Uh, I would look for an alternative to that, quite frankly. Um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not sure I follow the question per se. Um, can you give me some guidance on what you think he's trying to ask? Dude, I am in the same boat as you at the questions and comments in my question and comments okay. section. Some of them blow my mind, but I think it's kind of cute thinking about a horse sized duck and I think I'd have to pass on that. And a thousand duck sized horses would be too cute. And I think I would rather hang out with a thousand yeah. duck sized horses. That's just me. He also wants to know what info would you have to provide on the back end of a package? Uh, so that'll be based on each country's labeling laws. It's very specific. The FDA Health Canada have very specific uh, requirements on what you put on your labels and uh, our contract manufacturing groups where we'll be doing our bottling. all have the licensing and applications for that. So it'll be specific to each country, each jurisdiction. What events are you going to be attending? Will you go to mushroom events? Or are you going to mostly stick to like the business side of things? You personally, like, will you go as community outreach for the company to symposiums and forages and stuff? And then like on a personal level, are you interested in doing any of that? I know you have kids and a family and stuff and you're limited, but yeah. No, I'm very, I'm very, uh, very much interested in doing that for sure. I look forward to that opportunity. As, as we said, uh, when COVID sort of eases up and we're able to travel a little more freely without, you know, in Canada, we've got this 14 day quarantine if you go anywhere outside of the country. So it's a little restrictive in how you can do things. But uh, certainly as that opens up, um, obviously, as the CEO, I'm front facing to the capital markets and, and the investment community. So I do a lot on the, uh, a lot of the, con the conferences and talks that I do are focused in that market. Um, but we certainly see great value in, in introducing ourselves and making people aware of who we are when it comes to the actual, the, the mushroom side. And, and I would welcome the opportunity to go foraging with you for sure. That'd be a lot of fun. All right, those are all of the questions. I wanna tell everyone out there, I am excited about this for the reasons I've told you. 
and I'm fighting my own battles with censorship. And we are in the Wild West days. Maybe this company will go rogue and wind up being something none of us can get behind. Or maybe they're going to change the definition of a corporation in an entheogenic space and we change it for the future. We don't know, but I'm going to treat Jeffrey and this corporation the way I treat anyone when I meet them and I welcome them to this space. And I'm not the gatekeeper for the space, just for the channel. And anyone new to the channel, I say, welcome, welcome to the mushroom, welcome to the space, welcome to the community. And I'm asking all of you to do the same and you see why I'm welcoming and, and the things that I believe are positive. I have a long-term view of this mushroom, not just what it means to me right here, right now. And I knew this company was coming. And I have to tell you with my research and investigations, talking to people who have known these people and then in a meeting with these people and now this one, so far nothing is making me afraid and that's cool. And I want to tell you, Jeffrey, thank you so much for making time and what I can't imagine is an insane schedule taking up a, a company to do all of these things. I just can't even imagine. And for being so open and for your candor. And uh, I look forward to hanging out with you again. And you let me know when you want to come back. We'll have more questions for you when you know more and you just and you want to tell us what you know. Hit me up. We'll do it again. Um, that was fantastic. I appreciate your time and, and your openness and willingness to have us on because I think it's important for everyone to understand, you know, the, the good, the bad, the ugly. And, and as I said, we can't likely always align on things because we do have an agenda, but we are taking an approach where we want to be partners in this ecosystem and as it evolves. So I look forward to sharing updates with you in the community. And, you know, if anyone would like to reach out to me directly, uh, easy enough to find psyched-wellness.com, look at any of our press releases, he's got my email phone number and uh, you know, happy to have one-on-one -on -one conversations if anyone has questions specifically that uh, we didn't get to address on the show. That's awesome. Thanks, Jeff. Okay. Have a good one. Thanks very much, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.